Okay, let's get started. How did the uh, how did the homework go? It went okay. Did um, any of you were you, any of you able to use my homework solution videos at all? Did that was that helpful? Yes. Should I keep doing it? Okay. Yes. I've got I've got us covered for the next few sections, but then I'm I'm going to have to get in there and do some more. Um, I should be I should stay ahead of the class the whole semester. We'll see how it goes. Um, all right. Well, then should we proceed? All right. No no quiz today, but we'll probably need to have a quiz sometime very soon. If not the next class, for sure the next one. So be prepared in case I give one next time. All right. Let's go ahead and start chapter 7, trigonometric functions. This is a very long chapter. Uh, there's a lot in here. Uh, we're going to start off with 7-1 angles and measures. And we're, we're actually going to cover 7-1, 7-2, 7-3, 7-4, 7-5. Then we'll have our exam, and then seven six seven 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 eight. So we will be doing, we'll be in this chapter for quite some time. Now, most of you come in with some background, some idea of what an angle is, but we're gonna we're gonna just act kind of like we don't know what they are and just start from scratch. So we need to first uh, define a couple of things. If you have two points, connect them with a straight line. This is a line segment. That's what we call it. If you have two points and you extend a line both directions forever, well, that's your traditional line. And then if you start with one point, and go in one direction forever, like, well, there's two points, but you go in only in one direction forever. This is called a ray. All right, so just so we understand the difference between those three objects. So now we're gonna try and, and, and define what we call an angle. And to, to create an angle, what we need are to use two rays that share a common point, starting point. So that's how we're gonna begin this uh, approach. So we are talking about angles right now. So if we start with a single point and draw a ray and then draw a second ray, doesn't matter where it is, like this, then we create this measurable object in between the two rays, which we will call an angle, right? This right here. Again, I, I understand you probably have some idea of an angle already. But it's purely from the, from the geometry, the picture on the board. We're, def we're, we're actually looking at things, naming things, giving them some sort of life. So this point right here, we call the vertex of the angle. And the actual measurement of this right here, okay, that measurement, that is our angle. Now, when you create an angle with those two rays, we usually indicate that one ray is our initial side of our angle and the other ray is the terminal side. And it's up to us to determine which one we want to be, the initial meaning the starting, and then the terminal meaning the ending or the stop. So most notation, we will call this, this side right here the initial side. Okay, that's, we're talking about the ray right here. And then this one is the terminal side. So with that in mind, let me draw you a vertex in two rays, and, and I want you to identify the angle for me. So any questions on that? OK. So if I draw this ray, and I'll just do this one over here like this. 
Okay, where is this, where is the angle I'm talking about? Like in here? Yeah. Okay, that could be the angle I'm talking about, but doesn't have to be the angle I'm talking about because it could be this one, right? So there, there, there comes a little bit of a, a point here where we have to understand when you have initial side and terminal side, so I'm gonna put here initial and terminal. When I have the initial and terminal side, there are actually two angles I could be referring to here. One angle starts here at this initial and terminates right there, right? So I put a little arrow on it to show the direction where we started and where we terminated. But you could also have gone the other way, which would have started at the initial side and would have ended at the terminal side, right? And those are two different angles, aren't they? So any time that we have an angle that is generated using counterclockwise rotation, this is called a positive angle. So that blue one is a positive angle. And the one that is clockwise is a negative angle. And probably the most important thing for you to see in this, um, let, me, let me also put clockwise here. Clockwise. And the positive one was counterclockwise. Oops. There's an N in there, counterclockwise. The, the most important thing I want you to see in this is that having an initial side and a terminal side, you can see that there are actually two different angles formed by the, by the initial and terminal side, right? They're, they're two different angles. One of them's a positive angle, the other one's a negative angle. And it turns out later on as we progress through this that there's an infinite number of angles that start at the initial side and end at that terminal side. I could do this. I could have an angle that opens up like this counterclockwise, spins all the way around, and comes back and stops here. And that green one would be a positive angle, but it is a different angle than the blue one. Do you all see that? Because it, it rotates a full rotation, then comes back. And then I could do the same thing counterclockwise. I could come around, you know, start here. Uh, sorry, clockwise is what I meant to say. I could start here, come all the way around, and then come all the way back around like that. I know this <laughs> picture's starting to look like a mess, but you get the idea? If somebody gives you an initial side and a terminal side, there's actually an infinite number of angles that would start and end at those. Now, the one that we most commonly work with is that nice little positive angle in there. But there are an infinite number of equivalent angles. Okay, now. Let's talk about standard position of angles. Okay, so I think I'll do this with, uh, I'll use a couple of markers here. I'm going to try my best to hold these two rays in this position. I'm going to draw an angle over here. Uh, I mean, sorry, a, we have an angle in here, right? Like that. And then I could come over here, hold that the same way, like that. I've got that angle there. These two angles are the same, aren't they? I mean, if I, if I held this. But, but I've oriented one this way and one this way. And so you could come in here and orient it any way you want. And it would be confusing if we were all just orienting things however we wanted to, right? So what we have is a standard position. We have a way that we like to orient our angles so that everyone's kind of starting at the same place. And what we do to do that is we, we go back to what we already know, which is our standard XY coordinate system, right? This is, actually has a technical name. It's called our Cartesian plane. 
the Cartesian plane, two-dimensional space, flat sheet of paper, right? You have these axes that are, create a perfect little T, right? They're not skewed in any way. And what we do is we say, look, if you're going to draw an angle, let's just always have that initial side start from the origin and go out the x-axis. That will be our initial side. So we're going to start here with our vertex, come out like this, there's our ray, and then this is our initial side. And then your terminal side can pretty much be anywhere you want it to be. But see, we're all pointing that initial side out the same place. It just makes it easier, easier for us to all work on problems if we all start out with that same sort of base level understanding. That, that makes sense? Okay, terminal. And then of course there's infinitely many angles in there. Now when it comes to angles, we like to, um, we don't like to write angle, angle, angle. We like to use, since it, it can be, since angles can be, take on any values, they're variable, aren't they? They are variable measurement, they change. So we assign a letter to it, just like in algebra, we assign x for variables and y for variables, right? Well, in trigonometry, the standard letters that we use for angles are Greek letters. So the standard, the, the first standard one we use is the theta, okay? Theta, it looks like a, looks like a, a, a zero with a belt on, right? Wearing a little belt. I heard that joke, where did I hear that? It's not, a, it's not funny, I, I admit it's not funny, but. Um, what did, the, what did the zero say to the eight? Where did I see that? I don't know. He said, where'd you get the belt or something? I don't know. Okay, it's dumb. Anybody know what other Greek letters we like to use for angles? Theta works. That's our most standard one. Um, other variables? commonly used, is that, is commonly spelt right? Am I missing an E? That's right. That's right, okay. Used for angles. And this is not a Greek letter class, okay? We're not going to have a quiz on Greek letters. Um, but that one, you know what that is? Beta. Alpha, alpha, beta, theta, and the list goes on and on, but those are probably the most common ones we're going to work with. And it's just a convention. That's all it is. It's not like you must use theta. It's just, you know, like we use x and y in algebra, like we'll, we use theta and beta and... Hmm. All right. So those are our common ones. Now, with this new standard position, we also realize that if our angles, if our initial side and our terminal side are anywhere like between the x-axis and y-axis, then, or how do I say this? The Cartesian plane naturally breaks up the plane into four regions, right? You can see like an angle can land over here, an angle could land over here, an angle could land over here, or it can land somewhere in here, right? There's four natural places that it could fall. Or it could fall on one of the axes, but those four sections we name. We call them the quadrants, quad meaning four. So we have four quadrants. So this one right here is quadrant one. I'll just put quad one. Quad two. And then I'm just going to put three and then four. So we have four quadrants that are naturally created by the standard position um, of an angle. Now, does anybody know why we, I mean, just thinking through this, 
why we would call this one, two, three, four instead of like one, two, three, four, like reading a book? Exactly. If we start at the initial side and we do a positive angle, which is counterclockwise, then we're going to first start out in this section. So we should call that the first quadrant. And then we want to naturally move from the first to the second. So we want to call this two and then naturally into the third and then into the fourth. You don't want to be going like into two, then one, then three, then four. You're right? It would be weird. So that's why we um, name out the, or, or identify those one, two, three, four counterclockwise like that. Okay, we good? Good, good? Okay, let's talk about some special angles. Again, I, I know that a lot of you have seen this and you're comfortable with this and stuff, but it's kind of just, we need to start, yeah, we need to start fresh. Okay, so um, common angles. If our initial side is actually the same as our terminal side. So I, I came in here with a ray, I drew the initial side, and then I came in here with another way and I, ray and I drew the terminal side and it's right on top of it. Then what can you tell me about that angle? Not really close. I mean, it's got to be, they're on top of each other. They're on top of each other. So that means the angle either has no measurement, right? Or what? I've gone all the way around, right? Now, I'm not going to say 360 yet because we haven't talked about degrees. But yes, that will mean 360. But that means I either did not rotate or I rotated completely around one time. Or I completely rotated around. I could have just not moved at all. I could have gone around once. I could have gone around twice, three times, right? So this either represents no rotation at all or some multiple of a full rotation. Does that make sense? It's either no, no rotation or some multiple of a full rotation. So this is no rotation. or some multiple, what do I mean by that? Multiple of a full, full rotation, all the way around. What do I mean multiple? If I say, okay, let me ask you this. What's a, what are the multiples of three? What are the multiples of three? Three, six, nine, twelve, right? So all you're doing is you're taking three, you're multiplying it by one, then by two, then by three, then by four, right? Those are the multiples. Um, is zero a multiple of three? Yes. Zero is a multiple of three, because that's zero times three. Is negative three a multiple of three? Yes, because it's negative one times three. So when we say multiple of, what we mean is, just as, and this is going to come up later, what we mean by multiple is that we're taking all the numbers, all of these numbers, these are called, um, well, there's a technical name for them, but uh, I also want to include the negative numbers that go this direction forever. Do you all know what we call this collection of numbers? The real numbers include the fractions, so that would have decimals in there also. We're not including the decimals. Absolute. Integers. These are called the integers. So when I say multiple, what I mean is an integer multiple. An integer multiple. Is that clear? If I'm pointed out this direction, then I've either not moved 
which means I've done no rotations, or I've done one full rotation, or I've done two full rotations, or three, or four, or five, or six, or what about negative one rotation? I'm coming this way now, right? Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. Make sense? Okay, that, promise you, that's gonna come up a little bit later. We're gonna be using some different notation for that. All right, I wanna push you just a little bit more. Could I rewrite this? Could I just erase no rotation? Yeah. I could, couldn't I? Because if I put, if I took no rotation out, this would still cover no rotations because zero is a multiple and that would give me the zero rotation. So that's overkill, but I think my, in introducing it, I didn't want to not include that, all right? Okay, that's a common angle. Um, let's look at another, another common angle. How about like this? I'm just gonna put I for initial and T for terminal, is that okay? So we got our uh, standard position. So what can you tell me about this? 180 one way or the other. I, I'm gonna act like I have no idea what you're talking about when you say 180. Oh. You're right, but, but I haven't rotation, spoken that. One way or half rotation. Yeah, it's like a half rotation, right? Could you say a multiple of a half rotation? No, this is a tricky question. Okay, so this would be a half rotation, right? Yes? This right here would be a negative half rotation. No? Yeah? But could you have, is this right here, is this terminal side negative two half, ro or sorry, two, ro two half rotations, sorry. So that's one half rotation. Another half rotation would take you where? Back here, and that's not the terminal side. So we can't say this is any multiple of a half rotation. So this is a little more complicated, isn't it? It's a little more complicated. And so what we start to realize at some point is that we need a better way of talking about angles other than just talking about full rotations or half rotations or quarter rotations, right? It becomes difficult to describe what's happening here. So at some point, we decided, we as humans, right? We decided we need a convention for measuring angles. We need a way that we say, okay, we all agree that this much mean is this, right? So we came up with two different ways of measuring things. And we did that because we like to confuse everybody, right? Just like feet, you know, we have metric system, we have standard, you know, US versus metric. So we just like everyone to mess up. So we give you two conventions. So I'm gonna put here question mark and I'm gonna put, we need a, a um, standard way to measure angles. All right, so here's what we did. The first method that we came up with, the first system we came up with We have two ways of doing this. One, degrees. We came up with this idea of a degree. And then the second one is this thing called radians. And I think as students in pre-calculus, you will find degrees very easy to work with because it's something that you probably have already experienced. and I think everyone can make sense out of it. Radians, on the other hand, is quite elusive. People don't understand what a radian is. I'm gonna do my best to explain it to you, but it is elusive, because it, it's, not, it's not like, hey, I have a stick, and I'm gonna cut this stick into 10 equal pieces. So each one of these we'll call a, you know, whatever. It, that's not the way the radian works. So it's a lot more difficult to understand it. But degrees, that is what we do. So let's start with degrees. So with degrees, what we did is we said, look, if you start with your initial side and you go all the way around 
and stop here so your initial and your terminal are the same side, right? Then that angle right there, we will take it and cut it into 360 equal pieces. And each one of those pieces will be one degree. Why did we use 360? I know, but why didn't we use 400? Why? why? Right? Why use 360? I mean, we could have cut it into 10 equal pieces, right? 100 equal pieces. Someone decided 360 equal pieces. Three hundred sixty equal pieces, right? Each one of these, that little angle measurement is one, and then we use that little symbol up there for degrees, one degree. So there are three hundred sixty of them in there. Yes. Now I didn't answer the question. Why did we use three sixty? Did I? I think it has something to do with um, we had already established the idea of time and a clock and sixty minutes. And so what we try to do is come up with a way of breaking it up, but 60 was too little. Okay, 60 cuts was too small. I mean, uh, sorry, I, I, the number was too small. The pieces would have been too big. 60 cuts, our angles would have been too big. And it's not, it's, it's like if we could only measure things in meter or in feet, and we could never get down to inches. It was, it was just not enough. So we went 360 degrees, and, and so we could get smaller angles in there. And then we realized later that as things got more precise, that even a degree wasn't enough. So you can take one degree. So everyone understand that one degree is just uh, one three hundred and sixtieth of a full rotation. So one degree is equal to one three hundred sixtieth of a full rotation. So there are three hundred sixty degrees in one rotation. These are basically saying the same things. But if you like, you can cut that degree down and make it even smaller. So if you take one degree, let me show you what one degree looks like. And I'm just kind of, I, I have no idea. I'm just kind of eyeballing this. Let's say that this is one degree. I know it's not, but let's say that's one degree. You can take that and cut that into smaller pieces, and we cut it into 60 sections. And if you cut it into 60 sections, then each of those, anyone know what those are called? Each one of these is called no, a minute. That's what they call them, a minute. So, and this is the notation we use, one minute. Okay, so one minute is one sixtieth of one degree. So if I take one degree and I cut it into 60 smaller pieces, then that would give me one minute. Is that making sense? It's like if you take a foot, right? You, cut it, you can cut it into 12 equal pieces, and each one of those we would call a what? An inch, right? And then we could take that inch and break that into smaller pieces, right? Well, that's what we're doing here. We're just kind of refining it, making it smaller and smaller. So a minute is 1 60th of a degree. Then imagine we take one of those minutes. I didn't put the word here, minute. OK, that's one minute. Did I put degree over here? I didn't put, oh, it did. I told you degrees in the beginning. But okay, there's some minutes. So let me draw you a minute. Again, imagine you're like zoomed in really, really far. This is one minute right there. Okay, that's one minute right there, which is 1 60th of one degree. And if we can take that one and cut that into 60 smaller pieces also, and we call each of those a second, like minutes and seconds. But it's not time, it's a measurement of an angle, okay? I know it's, I didn't make this up, okay? I'm the messenger. Okay, one second is abbreviated like that. That's a second. And it is one sixtieth of a what? 
a minute. It's one sixtieth of one minute. It's a sixtieth of a minute. Make sense? Okay, can somebody tell me what one second is in terms of degrees? Like one second is what part of a degree? So imagine you got one degree, right? Cut into 60 equal pieces. Take one of those, cut it into 60 equal pieces, take one of those. Yeah, but it, as a fraction, what is it? It's not 1 60th, right? I'm asking you this. I'm asking, oh, okay, I got, I got, I got. I'm asking one second is one part of, of one degree. What part of a degree is it? What's that? 3600. 1 3600. How did you get 3600? 60 times 60, right? Because look, a second is a 60th of a minute, right? And a minute is a 60th of a second. So you're taking a 60th of a 60th, right? You're doing 1 60th of 1 60th. That's what a minute is. It's a 60th of a 60th. And of in, in mathematics means multiplication. So you're multiplying these two together. So it's 1 3600th of a minute. So that's as far as we go in any class. We go down to the seconds, but. Uh, did I say minute? Yeah. I meant degree. Yeah, I wrote degree. Did I, if I said minute, I apologize. One second is one three thousand six hundredth of one degree. All right. You happy with that? Maybe not. Okay, so now let's go back to our common angles. Shall we revisit the common angles? Now that we have more of an idea of, of how we can measure things, we'll get to radians, don't worry. Back to common angles. Ah, uh, I'm going to. OK, back to common angles. Let's go back to this one. The initial and terminal side are the same place. What could this be? Let's just start listing out the possible angles in degrees that this could be. It could be zero degrees. It could be 360 degrees. I could go negative 360. I'll put it, I'll put it right here. I could do plus or minus 360. This just, OK, we can go all the way around. Uh, counterclockwise, we go clockwise. We cannot move at all. 720. 720. And then you're going to be here for the rest of your life if you wanted to list them all out, right? Because there are an infinite number of them. So, this is where that whole idea of multiples comes in. Why don't we do this? A full rotation is 360. Yes? So, couldn't we say that this angle is 360 degrees times k, where k is an integer, right? k is an integer. Now, how do I say k is an integer? I can write it out like in words, k is an integer. Or I can use mathematical notation. So. This would be the mathematical notation. K is an element of, that's what that little symbol means, it's like a little curved E. K is an element of the set dot, 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 negative 3, comma, negative 2, comma, negative 1, comma, 0, comma, 1, comma, 2, comma, 3, dot, dot, dot. And that means all the integers. Or a better notation would be to use the double struck Z. Now you've seen double struck R in math, and that always represented what? All real numbers. You've seen that before, the double struck R? You could use that in answers. 
Well, double struck R means all real numbers, fractions, decimals, irrational numbers, everything thrown into a pot. If you use double struck Z, you're talking about the integers. So you probably have not ever seen that. Maybe you have, I don't know. But this, if you don't want to write all that out, then just write that. It means the same thing. But it's important to understand that when we say 360 times K, if I don't tell you what K is, then K could, someone could assume you mean any number. So maybe, maybe one half, right? Half of this is 180, and that's not what we're talking about. It has to be some multiple from this list. So from now on in this class, when you see me write K next to something like that, or I might also use N, OK? N instead of K, please understand that what I mean is K is an integer from now on. When I use K or N, I'm talking about an integer. And I'll probably mix them up. Sometimes I'll use K, sometimes I'll use N. And the reason is because textbooks, different textbooks use different, like, some authors like K, some authors like N. And if you have to take Cal 2, uh, most of the time we use N, all right? Questions? So this would, this right here, this answer right here, gives you all infinitely many angles that represent this picture, right? Okay. Now the most common ones that we would list were just those two, 0 and 360. That's either no rotation or one full rotation, but please understand there's an infinite number. <sighs> okay, let's keep going. I got this new phone, I mean this new watch, my wife got this for me uh, for Christmas. And it talks to me every once in a while. I can't figure out why it talks to me. And it tells, every time it does, it says, I don't understand what you're saying. So I need to figure out, there's some setting in here I need to tell it to not listen to me. My wife knows that setting. That's, did y'all get that? That was a pretty good joke. How to not listen to me, no? See, my wife doesn't watch these videos or else I'd be in trouble. Okay, initial side, terminal side, there we go. Okay, let's, let's figure out what this is. How could we represent this? Okay, somebody, let's just start listing out the angles. It could be 180, right? So how do you know it's 180? Because the initial terminal side, the way it's gonna end? Yes, but why 180? Like, because the whole way is 360? The whole way is 360, yeah, so half of that. Yeah. Okay, so 180 is this. I just want to make sure we understand, we all understand where 180 is coming from. It's half of 360. Okay, so it's 180 degrees. And then what? Just give me another answer. Negative 180, okay, so how about I do plus or minus? Okay, that'll work. Three, no, 360 is going to take me. I think I know what you're saying, though. I think I know what you're saying. So do you agree that these two would either get you here like this or get you here like this? Yes? But give me another angle that would get me back here. 540. So what did you do? Just, just added what to it? You added not 180. You, you started at 180, right? And then he said to get back here, you have to add what? 360. Look, this is critical. I know some of you are sitting there like, I know what a freaking angle is, man. I know what a 90 degrees is. This part, though, is important, all right? It's how do you count your way around efficiently? 180. But to get back here, I would have to go around a full rotation, right? So imagine I go back around. I've already gone through the black angle. I go back around. I'd have to go a full 360 again. But I didn't have to go around just once. I could have gone around twice, and I'd be back there. Or I could have started at the black and gone around 50 times and then stopped, right? So if I want to try and come up with some general answer using multiples in K or N, then what I need to do is start at 180, and I think that's what you were saying. Someone said, plus, I need to add a full rotation. That would work, right? But any multiple 
of a full rotation would work. So 360K. That gets me where I want to start at, 180. And then adding multiples of full rotations gets me back on top of that. It just keeps landing me, no matter what I do. Pick, someone pick a K for me. Two. two. Okay, so I'm going to start at 180, and then you put two there, so I'm going to do two full rotations. One, two, and I'm still there. You could do that for any number, negative five. So start at 180, and then now I'm going to go clockwise five rotations. One, two, three, four, five, and I'm still there, right? We're going to use this a lot, especially when we get to radians, we're going to be using this notation. So I'm trying to get you to understand it here on the second day as best I can. Questions? Okay, let's do another common angle. How about that? We love that one. 90 degrees. 90 degrees. That's half of 180. 90 degrees. So we could list this out. You could say 90. What's another? Give me another angle other than 90. Okay, stop. 270? Um, not quite 270. Almost 270. 720? So what did you... I was hoping someone would give me a negative angle. Which means starting at your initial side, get me up here. So, so what would this be? What would, what would this be to here? Negative 180? And then add another 90, so negative 270. I heard 270, but I didn't hear negative. That was the, that was the problem. 270 actually goes in stops and you're down here. Okay, so negative 270 would work also. <coughs> but let's do it again more efficiently. Let's come up with a general representation of that angle. So I always, to come up with my general um, uh, notation, I just get myself there first. Any way I want, get myself to that, to that terminal side. So how about 90, yes? So I'm gonna start with 90, and then from that, to get back to that, what do I do? Plus, you got to come all the way back to yourself. If I start here at 90 degrees, how much will I have to rotate by to get back here? 360 again, right? 360 will get me back there. So I just add again to this, 360 degrees K. This, is, this, this 360 K is kind of a common theme here. We're just going to add full rotations. Now, I want to try and convince you that this works. Let me just tell you what happens if k is 0. Because remember, k is an integer. If k is 0, what's the angle? 90. OK. What if k is 1? 450? Right? 1, 360 plus 90, 450. So 450 degrees. If, if I ask you, hey, show me 450 degrees, that would be that angle. How about a negative k? How about k is negative 1? Can, can k be negative? Yeah. Yes, it can. All right, so how about negative? I'm going to do 90 degrees, but instead of plus, this is going to be negative 1, it's going to be minus 360. And what is 90 minus 360? Negative 270, right? Isn't there? Right? That's this guy right here. So if I start listing out, you know, now 2, negative 2, 3, negative 3, I will come up with the entire list of all the angles that correspond to that. Yes? We could have done that same thing here. All right, let's do another angle, common angle. This will be our last one. I'm going to give you 20 seconds to write down the common formula for this one. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> 
Everybody have it? Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna try and play a little game this semester. It's not really a game, but I'm going to use my phone to generate a random number and then I'm gonna call on that person for the answer. All right? <laughs> so okay, Google. Give me a random number between one and twenty six. All right. <laughs> I don't make this up. Twenty four. Mackenzie, you're the lucky one. So look, everyone's going to get called on at some point. And it's, look, this is not about embarrassing you. This is about, I want you, if you're going to make mistakes and not understand something, I want it to be like while I'm up here and we're talking, rather than you're sitting in there taking the test. So who's Mc, you reacted, I can only assume <laughs> it's you. OK. It was random. You heard it, right? I heard it. OK. So any ideas? Okay. Do you know what this angle? Do you know what the measurement of this angle is? The positive two okay. Good. So that would get you there, right? Okay. okay. So start with that. You always want to start with the angle that's going to get you to where you need to be. Okay. And now, if I asked you to get yourself back to that place, that means you would have to go all the way around. Mm -hmm. So that means you have to add what to it? Three hundred sixty. K, because that would mean any number of full rotations. And that's it. OK. That's it. Well, sometimes we have to verbalize it to, to make it like, make sense to ourselves. That's it. So this 360K is, seems to be common. Yes? I'm going to push the envelope here. I'm going to see if you can handle this. And again, this is because of where we're going. I want you to I want to see if you can start thinking about this now. Let's say that I wanted you to describe any of those four angles. So you have this you could be this, 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 any of those four. Can you come up with a list, or can you come up with something like this, that for any value I pick for k, it's going to land you on one of those places? So if you think you have it, hold on to it, and I'll, I'll give everyone an opportunity to try and come up with something that'll work. Does anyone not understand the question? OK. Can I ask you a question, sir, with the hat? Do you have a brother here? Man, you have a doppelganger. You know what a doppelganger is? <laughs> yeah. Have you told him that too? No, but no? he does. He do you have a doppelganger. <laughs> darker, he has a little bit darker hair, yeah. but he is your doppelganger. Yeah. Yes. I would have bet money. I would have bet money that y'all were related. I don't know. Does he look like you? Your cousin? Probably not. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's the hat and the glasses. It's the glasses and the hat and the beard. So if it's all, eh, not so much. Not so much. So that changes things. OK. All right, I'm letting everyone think. All right, do we have any volunteers for it? I know I had, did you have, yes, you have something? OK, anyone else? I'm, I'm just seeing how many people. Anyone else have a shot at it here? No? OK, I'll let you go. What do you think? I would say. You said to describe any of those angles and... Somehow incorporate the K into your answer. 90 degrees plus or minus 360 degrees K. Okay, so let's look at this. 90, you said plus or minus? Yeah, because you said any value, right? Okay, let me, let me write down plus. I'm going to hold off on the minus. Okay. You don't need plus or minus because, remember, K can be positive or negative. Okay. So that's always going to take care of that. So I'm just do that. Now, what do y'all think? Is this going to work? No? Why not? Because it needs to stop So what, what's happening with this is you're going to start at 90, right? And then you're going to be adding full rotations, which is going to, it's going to land you right back here. You're never going to get to here, here, or here. I want to actually jump around and land on all of these. So this would take care of some of them, not all of them. Go ahead. Yes? What do you mean, 90 itself? 
90K, there you go, that will work. So watch, if we change this, now did you just want 90K by itself or do you want 90 plus 90K? Uh, no. just, 90K. just 90K by itself, okay, let me try that. 90K. All right, to see that this is gonna work, let's just start listing out what happens. If K is zero, zero. <laughs> If K is zero, if K is zero, what's our angle? Zero degrees. And where would that be? Right here, right? Okay, if K is one, where would we be? 90 degrees. And that would be here. And then if K is two, we'd be at 180. Yes? And that would take care of this. So what we're doing, the way I want you to see this, is this right here, starts you out at zero, right? If K is zero, it starts you at zero, and then starts adding to it 90s. 90, 180, 270, 360. It keeps going around, right? But it's jumping by how much each time? 90. Now, if you plug in negative values, it's gonna just go the other direction, but it's still gonna jump around, yes? Is that the only answer you could have had? Because I asked you, did you want me to leave the 90, right? And you said, no, just 90K, right? Would it have been wrong to have left the 90 out here? It would not be wrong. The difference between these two is that where am I going to start at? 90. And then start adding 90, 90, 90, 90. And I can jump around, right? Yes? Making sense? I'll give you one more to see if I can challenge you on this one. So here's your... We haven't even talked about this angle. But I will tell you that this is 45 degrees because it's half of 90. So what if I want you to give me a list with K or a, a, a notation there with K in it that will generate all those blue um, angles, terminal sides? 45 degrees plus 90K. Again, because you want to start out at 45, and then you want to jump 90, jump 90, jump 90, jump 90, and you'll create all those, won't you? All right? Are you all catching on to this? Okay. I'm kind of overkilling it a little bit here, but it, this comes up, and this is one of the big weaknesses that I have. In the class I taught last semester, this is one of the things that just, just a lot of students did not get it. And... Um, I didn't really expose them to it like this in the beginning, so I'm, I'm trying to like force this. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about radians. So remember, degrees, degrees came from the idea of taking a full rotation and cutting it into 360 equal pieces, which is the most natural way that we have done things measure, when we measure things. As humans, that's what we've always done. Take it, cut it into smaller pieces. Radiant, on the other hand, it's weird. So let me see here. I need some... Nobody has a piece of uh, string with them. No? Anyone have any string? No? I'll use this here. I may not use this. Where is that going? Let's make sure it's not zip tied. I'm going to steal this mouse cable. There we go. Yeah, y'all take a little mental break, I guess. Don't, don't tell anyone I was doing this. Okay. 
Oh shoot. What did I grab? There we go. Okay, here we go. Now I need a volunteer, and that means you're going to be on camera. So do I have anyone who wants to be a volunteer? You got it? Okay, thank you. All right, so we're going to draw a circle, all right? This is going to be kind of hard, but uh, we're going to start here at this point. And we talked about circles last time. You have to have some fixed radius, right? So everyone pay attention. This is the radius right here. I'm just choosing this arbitrarily as the radius. All right, so what I'm going to do, I need you to kind of hold the pin out here. You're going to be responsible for drawing from there and just kind of arcing, arcing that around. You understand? Okay. Ooh. And it doesn't have to be perfect. That's good. Right there. That's good. So we could have, we could have that circle. Now stand by. Move to the side a little bit. Okay, everyone see that? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put like our x-axis here like this. All right. Now what I'm going to do, this is really weird. This, this distance from here to here is our R1. That's our first radius. Okay? That's our first radius. Now, we're, what's your name? Jason. Jason's going to help me. We're going to take that end right there. Let's make sure we have the right radius. Let's go with that like that. Okay, right there. You're going to hold it right there. And what? move to the side a little bit. Jason's going to hold it there, and I'm going to kind of take that radius and match it to the arc of the circle. Do you all see that? Do you all see that right there? And then I'm going to mark this point up here. Okay, now stand back for a second. So do you see here, ladies, y'all okay? Okay. So what is the distance from here to here? What is the measurement of that arc? It's also R1, isn't it? And the point that I marked here, that actually creates the terminal side of an angle. So this angle right here, I can call theta, is something, right? It's something, it's some angle, yes? All right, now I'm going to let the class, I'm going to let you all tell me. This was our R1. I'm going to start making this longer, and I want someone to tell me when to stop. Right here? Okay, this is R2. You ready? You're going to do the same thing. So you want to do it from this side? Now I'm measuring from, from right about there. So. so he's going to draw another arc through here. Yeah, okay, good enough. <laughs> That's good enough. Too short. All right, so got that? So the measurement from here to here, that's, that's R2. Yes? OK, so let me measure it again. Now, take that side on the bottom. If we do this again, and we pace this along here the best we can, like this, we have another point up here. What's the measurement of this arc? R2 again, right? Yes? And if I draw that point to the origin, do you see something? I mean, this is not perfect. We're using a mouse cable, and, and Jason, this is his first time. So what, what does it look like? It's supposed to. It's just hard because we're not perfect here. But isn't that the same angle? Yeah. It's the same angle. And if we do R3, but Jason's going to not be able to reach up there. If we did a different race, I think we're good, Jason. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'll give you something for that at the end of the, fir at the, end of the first test. OK, so if I did R3, it would come all the way out here. If I swung that through like this, and then I put R3 out here and measured, we would actually get the same angle again. Yes? Oh, yeah, absolutely. If I go smaller, it'll work too. I'm going to kill this mouse. <laughs> if I go here to here, let's say, like that, and this one I can do without Jason. If I swing that through there like that, and then I come in here and I measure it, holy shit, it's the same thing every time. Right? So we realized, we realized this. We, 